While the recent budget announced by Finance Minister Enoch Godongwana was evaluated and debated, one Labour analyst said it did nothing to halt its impact on the unemployed and the abject poverty experienced by more and more families in South Africa. Terry Bell joins us now. Good evening, Terry. Thank you for your time. The minister, right at the start of his speech, said eradicating poverty, inequality and unemployment were urgent. Later on, he allocated $66 billion to social development, $30 billion of that for increases to social grant, and 36 for the extension of the SRD grant until March next year. Given what he said, why do you still believe that the most vulnerable are being shortchanged? Well, the most vulnerable of all, of course, are the young children. And the point is there's absolutely nothing there. There's been a complete mess all the way through. If you look at the Bill of Rights, <clears throat> we accept that children should be a priority. Nelson Mandela said so. In fact, the greatest, the, the treaty that is most ratified in the world is the, the Treaty on Children's Rights. But we do not follow through. We've had a situation, of course, it's now been slightly remedied in that we used to have the split between the social development department and the education department, where nursery education, or uh, what we call here ECD, early childhood development, was split between two departments. And many of the, much of the budget often was sent back to Treasury because it wasn't even spent. We yet live in a country which is supposedly middle income, which has the worst record in terms of child health. We have 27%, 1.7 million children under the age of five are stunted. I mean, this is a worse catastrophe, I think, than the, than the uh, present energy crisis, because we are distorting, we are destroying, we are crippling a whole generation, generations of, of people who are supposed to be the people who will pull us out of this mess in the future. Uh, they've done nothing for that. In terms of the actual social grants, they are pathetic, they're too low. How can you, for example, as even an individual, survive for, on 350 rand a month? I mean, I th think it's impossible. Mm. And the, all the way through, we are casting more and more people, and with the ongoing energy crisis, more and more people are going to be thrown out of work and into abject poverty. When you talk about that stunting statistic, it is, it's just chilling because we, we, we've lived with it. I think at one point, uh, not too long ago, it was 24, now it's 27, at least one in four children then severely malnourished in our country. That number is only increasing. You touched on the ECD issue. Let's talk about the ECD and the budget that was allocated there. Well, there's a in, in, totally inadequate budget. There is nothing there. As... as um, <laughs> The increase in the child grant and, and, and the sort of areas that will actually affect this, as Professor Eric uh, Atmore said, he's, he's a great child campaigner, he said this would add two extra slices of bread a day if we're lucky to a child. This is totally inadequate. And it's not just a question of that. Where are our early childhood centres? This was a country which actually had the second, it was the second country in the world to have a proper nursery, three-year nursery training college associated with a nursery school in Sophia Town of all places. The first one was, in, was actually in, in the slum of Deptford in England. We had all sorts of promises. We have the Bill of Rights, everyone saying we must prioritize children. Why I'm saying this is I actually think it is a deeper crisis, uh, the, the, the crisis of children and the inadequate supply, not just of a, of a few handouts, but of proper child care, proper education at nursery level, creches, nursery schools, kindergarten. We've gone some way toward this with, with grade R, but it's all a bit of a mess and grossly inadequate yeah. and, and very dangerous for the future. I mean, I'll direct our viewers to, to go and read your article, which talks in a bit more detail about all of the cascading effects of um, the way our economy is right now, the way things are structured on the most vulnerable uh, upon us. But if we look at the energy allocations to really try and, and deal with some of the issues um, that load shedding has brought to the country, would you say that it's going to have a trickle down or a positive impact somewhere along the way in terms of the lived experience of the unemployed and those below the poverty line? Well, if we carry on like this, no modern society can operate without adequate energy. What will happen is we will grow. We already have a gross um, 
wage and welfare gap. We were the most in, in unequal society in the world, it is said, and it's probably true. This will continue because those who can afford it will put in solar panels, inverters, etc. It's not going to change them. And they'll probably sell some of their extra power that they generate from solar to the municipalities to provide to other people who don't have, who have to pay for it and pay through the nose for it. Mm. So it's going to harm yet again the poor, the vast majority of our country who happen to live below what is seen as the food poverty line. I mean, it's, it's insane in a country that still produces food sufficiency. What's your call to action tonight, Terry? Get angry, get organized, and get out there and demand the things and have a, have a decent plan. Tell government, don't waffle on about promises and what you'll do tomorrow, etc. Let's see actual plans, actual policies, and a timetable for implementation, and have that properly monitored. We have to obviously get rid of the most hideous amount of gross corruption, and that's going to be very, very difficult, because our judicial system, our policing system, everything's been infiltrated. It's not going to be easy, it's going to be messy, but it's really, I think, up to ordinary citizens, to you and I and the people out there, to get together unite and say we've had enough and try to organize around oh, the finest quite honestly the finest political program that exists anywhere the bill of rights in our constitution labor analyst terry bell thank you for talking to us tonight we appreciate your time